If you've been driving around in Malaysia, chances are you've seen an electric car in the flash. Since you're watching this video, I'm guessing some of you may even own one already. And just like how fuel matters so much to internal combustion engine cars with the various grades, additives, etc., electricity matters to electric cars. And when it comes to electricity, there's AC and DC, alternating current and direct current. One creates a sinusoidal wave on the current time graph, while another creates a simple straight line. Now, we might not care so much about the differences between AC and DC, but this is something that will affect your EV ownership experience. Let me explain. This video is brought to you by Jintari, and Jintari has a network of EV chargers consisting of 110 AC chargers and 50 DC chargers nationwide. Since we've left high school, most of us have never really paid attention to alternating current, direct current and their applications. However, now is about the right time to do so as more and more vehicles are becoming electric. And with electric vehicles, there is such a thing as AC charging and DC charging. So, without getting into too much detail, let's try to understand both AC and DC charging. What are they, how do they work and what are their benefits? Let's start with AC charging. It is the so-called slow charging method, but AC chargers were the first type of public chargers to be rolled out in Malaysia. They also make up the bulk of the charging network. Generally, AC charging is done with a wall box and they are usually rated at either 7, 11 or 22 kilowatts. With AC charging, the average EV takes about 6 to 10 hours to fully charge. Charging with a 3-pin socket at home or wherever is also AC charging, albeit a much, much slower version of it. What do AC chargers look like? Well, you've probably seen these small boxes at parking lots or the porch of EV owners and these are called wall boxes. Some of them have tethered cables while some do not. AC charging works with a converter in the car or an onboard charger, an OBC, which converts AC to DC to feed power into the battery. So power comes from the EV charger in the form of alternating current. To charge a car via this method, you'll usually be using the Type 2 connection or Type 1 connection for some Japanese cars. In Malaysia, Type 2 is the more common option. Depending on the car, AC charging can be done at different maximum rates. A Mercedes-Benz EQS, for example, can handle AC charging at a rate of 11 kW 3-phase, a Renault Zoe can handle a maximum rate of 22 kW 3-phase, and a BYD Atto 3 can only handle 7 kW single-phase. Why the differing numbers? Well, with AC charging, there are actually two types of charging. So there's single-phase charging and triple-phase charging. A car like the Volvo XC40 can handle both triple-phase and single-phase charging, while a car like the BYD Atto 3 can only handle single-phase charging. And as you might have guessed it, three-phase charging is generally faster than single-phase charging. So 22 kilowatts, three-phase, 32 amps is faster than 11 kilowatts, three-phase, 16 amps, and 11 kilowatts, three-phase, 16 amps is faster than 7 kilowatts, single-phase, 32 amps. The one deciding this is the onboard charger of the car. Now, the thing to note about AC charging is that with cars like the BYD Atto 3 that can only handle single-phase 7 kilowatts, you will not get 11 kilowatts or 7 kilowatts if you are plugged into an 11 kilowatt three-phase charger. Instead, you will only get 3.7 kilowatts as you're only taking one of the three phases. So be mindful of that. In Malaysia, we have a variety of three phase, single phase, 32 amps, and 60 amp chargers. So it would be best for you to understand what your car can do first before you decide to plug in. Besides the number of phases, the current also determines the rate of charging. So if you've noticed, the Renault Zoe can charge at 22 kilowatts, while the Mercedes-Benz EQS is only able to charge at 11 kilowatts. The reason is that the Renault Zoe's onboard charger allows for three-phase 32 amps charging, but the EQS only allows for three-phase 16 amps charging. Although you might think that AC charging is slow, it will be the more common type of charging that you will use as an EV owner. Why? Simply because you can easily install an AC charger or a wall box at your home or office. And when you have an AC charger at your home or office, you will typically be charging while you're sleeping, while you're eating, working, chilling, or just about anything else. So this is the most convenient type of charging method should you have the necessary resources to do so. 
So usually charging won't take away time from your daily life as it is something that happens simultaneously as you're going about your daily business. Another benefit to AC charging is cost. At maximum, AC charging at home would cost you 57 cents per kilowatt hour. So charging, say a Mercedes-Benz EQS with a 108 kilowatt hour battery pack from 0 to 100% would cost about 62 ringgit only. In the long run, AC charging is also better for your car battery's health. When you're doing long road trips, you will need a DC charger. And DC charging is the type of charging that usually makes the headlines due to its sub one hour or even sub 30 minute charging time. And this speed is necessary to make your journey convenient as you're stopping at rest areas and laybys. DC charging bypasses the OBC or the onboard charger and is managed by the battery management system. And although DC charging is generally faster than AC charging, not all DC charging is equal as it differs between EV models and EV charging stations. For DC charging, you will need a CCS2 connection or a Charimo connection for some Japanese cars and a DC charger is quite easy to tell apart from an AC charger since they're usually bigger, beefier and also a bit noisier since they need a cooling system to run properly. Let's get into a bit of the details of DC charging. Besides the bigger chargers and faster charging speed, well, the charging gun for DC is also a bit heavier. Like AC charging, different cars have different maximum DC charging rates and this is mainly decided by the battery management system. A Mercedes-Benz EQS can handle a maximum rate of 200 kilowatts, and a BYD Attitree can handle 80 kilowatts maximum. Both cars are essentially cars without an 800 volt architecture so there's not much point charging them at 350 kilowatt base. You're better off charging at 180 kilowatt base instead since the tariffs will differ. Cars with an 800 volt architecture are what will benefit the most from a 350 kilowatt charger. One car that has this is the Kia EV6. With DC charging, it is fastest at below 30% and the charging speed will usually taper off as you approach full charge. DC charging also becomes very slow, typically past 85%, so there's not much incentive for you to charge in this manner after this point, especially if you're paying by the minute. What's great about DC charging is that it is very fast. The Kia EV6 with its 800 volt architecture only takes 20 minutes to charge from 20% to 80%. And as for EVs without an 800 volt architecture, this typically takes about 45 minutes or so. Even if you don't get to fully charge your car with the DC charger during a quick stop at the rest area, you will be able to regain a significant amount of range. Charge your car, go to the washroom and get some snacks, and you've probably regained about 100 kilometers of range or so. If you're particular about the battery health of your car, you might not want to DC charge too often, but when you don't have the luxury of time, this is the perfect solution for you. So now that you know about all these charges, let's take one car as an example. Let's say the Mercedes-Benz EQS. The car would charge with the following rates at different charging stations. So now that you know more about AC and DC charging, we hope that you can make better decisions when it comes to charging your electric car. Depending on the situation, it may be best to use a DC, AC, single phase or three phase charger. This video is brought to you by Jantari and Jantari has a network of 160 EV chargers nationwide. To locate and activate these charges by Jantari, simply use the Settle or Jump Charge mobile applications. Jantari also offers home charging facilities and these are great to allow you to charge your car as you're relaxing at home. Jantari has set up a pretty decent EV charging network not long after being established in mid-2022. In just a short amount of time, 160 charges have been deployed to date. Across the country, Jantari's charging network is ready to serve your EV needs. All that's left for you to do is to switch to electric.